If my mom and dad were here, you have no idea how much they would have enjoyed this event. Good evening, my name is Mike McCaffrey. I am a proud graduate of Baden High School from the class of 1971. Before I begin, I too would like to thank Mary Sue Wright, Dirk Allen, and the entire Hall of Fame committee for putting together what's turned out to be just a wonderful affair. Thank you very much. And also congratulations to an unbelievable group of athletes at this table. I also like to thank the bartenders. When you bring the caddies to a group, you always make sure you say hello to the bartenders. <laughs> Well, as most of you in the audience know, the McCahees are a very large family. There are 14 of us, eight boys and six girls. You add in the five grandchildren that have graduated from Baden, that puts the total at 19. You include the spouses, the number jumps to 22. It's a lot of tuition checks. <laughs> there have been three Baden mergers in our family. My brother Bill is married to the former Marshall Ogden from the class of 1970. Marsha was also an English and drama teacher while she was here at Baden. John is married to the former Kim Schlager from the class of 1979. And my sister Elaine is married to Dave D. John from the class of 1969. So, out of 14 choices, how did I get selected to be this family spokesman today? Well, it's really a very simple answer. My big brother Bill told me I was going to be a sign of <laughs> And I must say, after all these years, he still has the ability to strike fear in my heart, so I always do what my big brother tells me. Isn't that right, Dan? Actually, I am thrilled to be here and be the family spokesman tonight. It's quite an honor, and I do thank you. To show the pride that we associate with winning this award, I am proud to tell you that 12 of my 14 brothers and sisters are here tonight. And I would ask all three of the McCahey and four of the McCahey tables to stand out so everybody knows who you are. Who would you? I'd also like to thank my brother Bill and his wife Martha. They came in from Houston, Texas. Now their son Billy and Matt could not make it, so I assume they're holding down the fort in Houston. My sister Pat came in from Dallas, Texas. Thank you, Pat. My sister Annie and my sister Sarah came in from Charlotte, North Carolina. So we had a bit of a trip to get here. Unfortunately, my sister Sheila, who lives in Connecticut, and my sister Elaine were unable to attend. But we still have 12 out of 14, which is a pretty good number we can vote. So on behalf of the McCaddy family, I can say that we are both delighted and we are very humbled to accept the award from Baden High School for the Baden Legacy Family now listen to some of the names from some of the other families who've been the recipients of this award. The Malones, the Pace, the Larkins, the Cox, the Gormans, the Defazios, the Brinks, the Sarvers, the Crecky's, and the Fears. You're talking about great families made up of great athletes that have made a very, very positive mark on the Hamilton and the Baden community. To be included among this impressive group, a very impressive group, is an honor and we thank you very much. So, just who were Bill and Elaine McCarthy, and where did this legacy come from? Well, to properly answer that question would take several cocktails in a long evening. I trust you. The Irish simply cannot tell short stories. It's part of our heritage, we can't do it. But since we don't have time for a long evening, I will provide the cliff notes, and I think we all know what cliff notes are. Our mom and dad met at a dance in downtown Pawtucket, Rhode Island in 1950. Mother was a year out of high school, 19 years old, and was working at a department store. My father was a first year law student at Boston University. You know, it was always fun to listen to mom when she talked about that first meeting. Her eyes would light up, and you just knew this was a magical moment for her because she was talking about her bill. They were soon married, and along came the McCaffrey family. After several years of practicing law, Dad began doing some legal work for a life insurance company back east. One thing led to another, and soon he was recruited by the Ohio Casualty to move to Hamilton and run the Ohio Life Insurance Company. So in 1961, they packed up their six kids and moved from Massachusetts to Ohio. Our mom and dad were great people. Many of you in the audience know who they were and you had an opportunity to meet them. But for those of you who don't know my mom and dad, let me just tell you a little bit about them. 
My father was a very, very interesting guy. He was actually born in Warsaw, Poland. When asked how he happened to be born in Poland, his usual response was, well, that's where my mother was. <laughs> he had spent some time in the seminary, was in the Navy, went on to Providence College, and eventually Boston University Law School. Dad had a great laugh, and he enjoyed a funny story. He was very, very well read. He was an Irish historian, and he could speak comfortably on any subject. Trust me, we tested him on many, and he knew a lot. He was a very good athlete as well. He was a great big left-hander, and as hard as we tried, I don't think we ever beat him in a game of handball. And trust me, we had many, many spirited games down at the Y. In fact, another idea, another memory came to me tonight when I ran into Terry Feaster. I think we were in high school, Terry's senior year. My dad asked Terry if he would team up with him in the city tournament and the handball tournament for doubles. Well, you have no idea how long these matches lasted, but Terry Feaster and my dad teamed up and they won the, they won the city doubles tournament. So I remember Terry was quite a match. He also coached our St. Peter CYO High School basketball team, and we actually won the state championship in 1970. Quite a feat when you consider we come from a small town. Also, a little known fact that I think most people don't know, but most of the family know, he really was a frustrated peasant. One of his favorite poems was Casey at the Back. It's quite a long poem, but of course he had committed it to memory, and he would often regale us with his own very special rendition of that particular poem. At family gatherings, the old man would get up, he'd grab a baseball bat, put on a ball cap, he'd quiet the crowd, and then he'd begin to do his casey at the back. So, here's this six foot two, 250 pound man, standing in the middle of the room, reciting the lines with all the voice inflection he could muster. Now all the kids, of course, we were pulling for Casey. <laughs> but unfortunately, we all knew the last line all too well. But there's no joy in my though. Mighty Casey has struck out. It was a great entertainment, but it's even a better memory. Our mother was simply an amazing woman. In fact, if you go to the dictionary and you look up the word amazing, listen to the definition. So extraordinary or wonderful, as to be barely believable or to cause extreme surprise. So extraordinary or wonderful. That's a good definition. She was incredibly funny, quick-witted, and for those of you who know her, she never ever met a stranger. As many of you know, she had quite a voice. She loved to sing, and at St. Patrick's Day, it was always a very, very special time at our house. Danny Boy, take me home, Kathleen. And of course, if I had my life to live over, they were the songs we grew up with. There was one thing about her singing, however, that we didn't particularly care for. You just never wanted the old man to join in the chorus and sing the modern love. He simply couldn't carry a note, but it didn't matter. He just loved to sing cockles and mussels and alive and alive. Early in their marriage, she really wasn't much of a sports fan. In fact, there were many times on our way to a Little League game, she would encourage us to score a touchdown. <laughs> and likewise, on our way to a CYO football game, she would encourage us to hit a home run. However, having sat through hundreds of CYO and beta games, she eventually became a good fan. So the hug she got from Vinny after the state championship game in Massey was the perfect way for her to end many, many years of sitting in the bleachers watching her sons play football. Now that many of us are married with families of our own, we often ask ourselves, how in the world did they do it? Fourteen kids, financially, logistically. But when I stop and think about it, maybe the better question is, how did mom do it? Tragically, dad was taken from us in 1981 at the tender age of 54. Way, way too young. Mom still had 11 kids under her under her roof at home, and she was only 51 years old. Now when you hit your 50s, this becomes to make a little more sense to you. She had never worked outside the home. She was always a homemaker. Most of us would say she pulled it off because of her incredibly strong Catholic faith. In spite of all the tough times, she continued to laugh, she continued to sing, and she continued to raise her 11 kids 
as best she could. Mom passed away a few years ago at the age of 76. We miss her dearly, but we know she's in a better place with her dear Bill.